Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another Brad Teaches video. Today, what I wanted to show you was a concise look at some of the main functions within Snap and give you sort of a concise uh, summary and how to on some of those main features. So to go ahead and get started programming in Snap, all you have to do is go to snap.berkeley.edu, like I have it typed right there, and once you hit enter, you're taken to the Snap home screen. Now, in order to get started programming, you click Run Snap, It'll open a new browser tab for you, and that's all you have to do right there. You have it started, and you are ready to get programming in Snap. So now that we are inside the actual Snap programming area, there's a couple of different parts of this that is very useful to know and get familiar with. On the left right here, we have the Snap uh, block palette. This is where you can actually select all the different blocks that you need. And at the very top of this palette too is the tabs in which you can select different types of blocks, uh, some of which I'm going through right now that control the look of the screen, the sound of the uh, sprites themselves, as well as the pen to give you the ability to draw. Um, in order to start programming, you simply click one of these like clear and you drag it out into the stage. This stage right here is actually called the scripting area and it is where you actually do your programming. So if I wanted to build a simple uh, program that would just maybe say hello, uh, hello world, which is a common, of course, programming exercise, I just type hello world and once I click it, you can see I actually get that there on the right hand, which is called the stage. Now we have a basic piece of code that interacts with our sprite that is on the stage, but one of the other features of Snap is that we can also create multiple sprites that contain multiple programs. So if I go down right here, I have the sprite corral, which is this section. And if I wanna create a new sprite, I can just click this little arrow and you can see sprite two in parentheses has popped up. And I know that text right there is just a little bit tiny to see. But regardless, this new sprite does not have the same scripts that I've created in the previous sprite. It is completely brand new. So earlier I showed you uh, just this left-hand side, which we call the palette, the block palette. And there's a lot of different uh, categories of sprites or uh, blocks that we can use within the section. Um, and it would take a lot of videos to cover. Uh, but what I wanna do is just kinda show you some of the more important ones and some of the main features of each of the different sections. You can see right here, we already have the motion tab up and most of these are gonna be used throughout your time and snap just because they are uh, correlated directly with moving and interacting with the sprites on the stage. You can see right here, we have go to X zero, Y zero that instantaneously will move your sprite to a different area of the screen. So if I were to put in 10 and 10, you can see this will move my sprite to that location right here near the center of the screen. Uh, there's a lot of different motion blocks that come in handy, but for now we're gonna go ahead and move on to looks. Looks deals with the actual look of the sprite on the screen. You can do things like say something. So if you wanna have your sprite say something like Brad or just any custom text, that's how you would do so. You would use that say block. Uh, you can also change these sprites that have different costumes, which would be just different images that you preload onto the uh, program itself, you can change the size, you can show a sprite, hide a sprite, so on and so on. Uh, beneath that we have sound. Sound is a little bit less used because it is uh, just a little bit more difficult to get into if you don't know a lot about how um, music and sound works, like what the uh, meaning of HZ is, which is Hertz, which is uh, the frequency of these different sounds, right? Um, so it's a little bit lesser used. You also have pen, which shows uh, how to draw on the screen. So for instance, if I wanted to use pen down and I used pen up, I could make my sprite draw. So let's say we have move 10 steps, pen down, and then pen up after that. This is one individual script right here, and you're gonna see the red uh, sprite would draw a line. And you can start to see that line the more and more I create this script and uh, I actually run it. Beyond that, we also have the control screen, which is immensely important. Um, it controls the actual flow of your uh, sprites. So one thing I could do is I could draw out this repeat 10 times and then put that over the rest of the code that I just did to draw. And that would actually run it a number of 10 times. So you can see that control section runs and helps you uh, manage a lot of the different parts of your code. Beyond the control section, the next section we have is sensing. 
And sensing uh, does a lot of taking in input from both the user when you actually run your programs as a full program in full screen mode, as well as when you're trying to work on your program. So for example, we can have the ask block that when it says, what's your name? And you actually run that script, it will pop up a dialog box. So you can see that's kind of with, um, a, a lot of the sensing blocks deal with taking in input from either the user or yourself, and then you can use that later on in your program. Now, one of the ways that you can use that in your program, which I will show you right now, we can skip to the variable section where uh, you deal with a lot of different maybe list operators that you can see right here on the bottom, as well as being able to create and set the value of different variables. If I click make a variable right up here at the top, it'll open a dialog box and I can name a variable called var1 and I click OK. And now that variable is set for me to use and I can use set var1 to anything I want. Finally, the last section that I want to talk about in all of these is operators, which uh, has to do with uh, adding, subtracting, um, pretty much any time you want to interact with variables or any of your maybe custom functions you might write later on, you would use these operators. So if I wanted to maybe uh, double the value of R1, I could do this, where I pull out the plus operator script and I pull out var1 twice, and you can see now I can do var1 plus var1, and we could do that right there. We could say set var1 equal to the value of two of itself. Um, of course, there are other sprites that could help us do that, including the multiplication operator and some of our Boolean operators right here, which is like and, and, or. So this would help us write conditions using the control blocks that we saw just a minute ago, and um, that is actually the last of our different sets right there on the right. One of the first things I wanna start with for the actual programming basics of working in Snap is just creating and setting variables. So right here, as I showed earlier, we can make a variable and name that maybe money total and click okay. And you see that we have the money total, which is a new variable right there on the left-hand side. And we even display that value right here on the stage. Now, if I want to set that variable to an amount, I would go here, bring out the set block, which is right below the variables, go to money total and set it to something like 10,000. And if I click it, you can see that the money total has now been set to 1,000. If I want to do something further, maybe I could add money total to something else. So I could go down here, say set money total to, and I can use this addition um, operator right there, say set money total and I could say set money total to money total plus 5,000. So we can see right here, if I click that, the money total is now whatever money total was before plus 5,000. Uh, however, if I go up and click the set block right above it one more time, it sets my money total back to 10,000 again. Now the next thing that I wanna do with my variables inside of Snap is actually work with conditions so I can make decisions based off the data that I just set. You can see right here, I've gone to the control tab and I'm going to, going to go ahead and pull out an if else block. And what I can do with my if else block is set a condition based on the variables I just pulled out. So now I'm gonna to go to operators and I'm gonna find my Boolean values right here that I use and I'm going to snap that. And you can see it has the same exact shape as the if else block that it's waiting on. Um, and I wanna check and I wanna say if the money total that I just drew was greater than uh, let's say 20,000. And if that money total is greater than 20,000, I wanna go to looks and I want to uh, tell the user, and I believe it's in looks, I should be able to say, oh, actually I actually have to create a variable or create a sprite and I wanna set this over here. So one of the things you just saw me do is I, I created a stage um, or I created a sprite and then moved what I was programming previously on a stage to the sprite because only the sprite can actually say anything. So I'm going to say, you can afford a car if the money total is greater than 20,000 and we'll say, do that for five seconds. And if, if, if it is not greater than 20,000, then I wanna say, you cannot afford a car. And then of course, it's just a theoretical car that costs $20,000. Now, once I click this, this whole piece of code is gonna execute and it will end with a say block saying you can't afford a car or you cannot based on the total money value, which we know the value of total money and our sprite is gonna say you cannot afford a car. 
Now, another part of programming that is incredibly useful is being able to do things repeatedly using loops. Uh, and to do so in Snap, we go to Control right here on the left-hand side, and we find any one of our different control blocks. So you can see we have wait one second, um, which is useful, but then we also go down here to the forever loop, the repeat number of times loop, the repeat until, and the repeat for something to something else. Um, all of these have very different uses, like forever might be used if you're running a game that's a continuous program. The for loop would repeatedly check uh, maybe conditions within the game, but we want to use the repeat 10 times. So one thing we could do if we wanted to is use the operators to, uh, you know, just multiply maybe the money total by something else, right? Uh, by like the number five or the number six uh, to simulate maybe the number of times that we get uh, a total amount of money. Uh, but instead of doing it that way, I'm gonna say to use the repeat block. So here we're gonna start and we're gonna put in number four because we wanna repeat four times. And what I wanna do is I wanna set money total right here to uh, do the, and let's go ahead and find it. We're gonna say plus money total plus 5,000 because we're gonna say that's how much we get from each one of like a fictional job. And then we can see at the end, repeat four times, money total is now 25,000 because we are adding 5,000 uh, four times to 5,000, which is just 20,000 times uh, plus five, right? And that's sort of how we can use that repeat block. Something we could also do with the repeat block uh, is use motion. So if I wanna say move the sprite, uh, let's say 50 steps, right? Uh, normally, if I wanted to do that, uh, I would click it, I'd click it again, but that obviously gets repetitive. So I wanna remove uh, 50 steps four times, but I also wanna be able to turn. And I'm gonna do so uh, counterclockwise, and it's gonna be 15 degrees, and you can see we've turned for a total of 60 degrees, and we move 50 steps, which has moved us in an arc. And that is how we can use our loops within Snap. The last thing that I wanted to show you today was how we can create custom block definitions that work a lot like functions within many other programming languages, where it allows us to define custom logic that is callable in a single set of code. So to do that, you can see right here, I have a a uh, large piece of code that basically draws a circle uh, or sort of an expanding uh, line that goes out from the center. I uh, have a repeat block in here that says, you know, step forward the amount of steps times 1.5, turn 45 degrees and continue. Uh, but the more and more code that I have on the screen obviously can get very cluttered. It's very inconvenient. Uh, I want to make this just a bite-sized chunk. So I can go to any of my uh, code blocks right here on the left and I can click down here, make a block. I would define the name of the block. I would say maybe um, uh, expanding circle. And let's make sure we spell that right. And I click OK. And that uh, custom block is now created right there on the left. Um, I click the plus button over here to give input. And I want to say this is turns. And click OK. Uh, extend this a little bit. And then move my code into this new window. Now that I've done that, I can click OK, and you can see right here, expanding circle uh, is the exact same thing. All I have to do is go in, click Edit, and the reason that I added a variable is because I wanted the user to be selecting the amount of turns. So I drag the turns variable down here to repeat, I click OK, and now I can say the number of turns that I want the same way that I did before. So right here, if I click that, uh, you can see obviously one does nothing, 10 gives us a slightly larger circle, and 25 gives us a much bigger spiral that goes off the screen, right? And that allows us now to put what was a chunk of code that was maybe 10 blocks big and just put that into one single block. And that is the main parts of what I wanted to show you all for Snap. There's a lot more that Snap can do. It is a fully featured and complex and very useful language, um, but that is kind of just some of the basic programming and layout parts of the language. I hope this video helped you very much. If it did, please leave a like and a comment. Thank you very much.